now more HDR news again. So you're now going to add HDR in terms of a free firmware upgrade to existing products such as the Shogun, the Assassin, the Ninja. Yep. Um, how is that actually working? Because we know you need like 1500 nits usually to see a full HDR display, and these have only got 400 nits. So what's the benefit of adding the HDR technology to those it's machines? A, it's a very good question. So everyone has to remember that log equals HDR, HDR equals log. Provided you've got a log signal and you're recording that log signal, which is what we do. So we don't touch that log signal. We just, we represent it on the panel to show a wider dynamic range. Now, how do we do that? So you need to be able to control every part of your process. We control the panel, we can control the processing of brightness and color for that panel, we control the frequency of, of video going to the panel, we control the recording, we control the operating system, we control the input, and provided the camera maker gives us the algorithm for the log, the actual algorithm, then we have all the ingredients for the magic. So the, why, can we, why does it look so good on the flame? It's because screen technology has moved far enough where my brightness range can be mapped using the nits. So I'm at 1500 nit top point, and I'm at one nit black point. So 1500 nits of the whites, one nit in the blacks. What that means is I can display up to, that actually, if you do the equations, equates to 10 stops of dynamic range, which means it can look pretty bright at the same time as representing that range. What happens when you go if in an image, for example, a simple one, sun and dark corner of a room? In, you're shooting it out the window or something. That sun will be represented at 1500 nits. It'll be really bright. And the corner will be represented at one nit. So you'll see a big stark difference there. If I now go to a panel that is, and the, the flame panel is 10 bit, so you don't get any banding. If I now go to a Shogun panel or a Ninja Blade panel, which we've announced the update for, what happens with that is the sun will be at 400 nits and the corner will be at one nit. I can still show the range, but I can't show such a big range. What happens? The whole thing gets a bit darker. So it's showing more like, you know, maybe eight stops of dynamic range as opposed Correct. to 10. Absolutely, absolutely. So all it is is you don't get as much accurate rep representation of what the sensor's actually capturing, but it's close enough. You're probably at about 80 to 85% of what you're seeing. It's much better than using a 709, 709 LUT. LUT on it because you're losing all the details in the 709 LUT, whereas this is showing you where the details are. So it can get you closer to that creative look that you want and you can really know that you're, you're in the ballpark of, of what you're shooting. But if you really want to do perfect HDR shooting and get everything nailed perfectly, then you still need a flame. But this is my thank you to those customers and you'll find that I'm still shooting pretty well with the Ninja Blade and my HD camera with a log output, let's see 100. I, I like that form factor, so I bought it for myself. And that's what I film my kid in, that's what I do, you know, weddings for my friends and stuff like that. And I'm loving the HDR on it, with C-Log coming in, and I didn't have to spend a cent. I already had those products. So I love HDR because log cameras are already in people's hands, they don't have to spend any more money. We can give this because of our processing technology, we've been spending a year developing this, and we're really proud of how it looks. Uh, I know you've used it. Um, and you also get, as a side benefit, not just HDR, you get a real in-the-sun panel that you can actually use. And I know that you commented on, on the use of the 1500 nits in a Rec. 709 shooting environment. Oh, even HDR I found outside in certain circumstances that it was very viewable, out, even in bright sunlight, if it wasn't a lot of dark images in the scene. Yeah, that's right. And, and I th you know, you're touching on a very good point, that the scene determines what dynamic range is in the brightness range. You can't really adjust that unless you're putting lights and lamps and okay, you can control the lighting, but in a natural scene, you can't really control it. So if it's a really wide dynamic range, like a sun and a dark point, then then you have you have the chance to see it. If you don't have that wide dynamic range, you don't need to turn on HDR. Just record Rec 709 and be done with it. I think the key is to remember, log is recorded, you can pull 709 or HDR out of that, in your, in your post-production process. So let's go to the post-production process. Now you've shot HDR, you know you've nailed it because you've got this great monitor. What happens in post-production? Well, we've added PQ in and PQ out for play out. Okay, so just explain to people what PQ means. Okay, so PQ is, is the standard for HDR, the same as Rec. 709 was the standard for that for older TVs and older displays. Rec. 709 had a very narrow range of brightness, PQ has a very wide range of brightness. And that is what we need to send to a, an HDR TV. 
So this is the step in the chain that was previously missing. So Correct. before you couldn't do that. So this is the little trigger that so you could use, take your camera for instance, plug it into the, go via the Shogun um, flame or yep. the... Uh, Inferno. Yeah. Inferno, I'm getting tongue tied yeah. here, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> and then run it into an HDR TV and then send that signal that's needed to replicate the HDR image. Correct. And that's what, we're, so we're showing you from the log acquisition curve, PQ is basically the display log curve that matches what we're showing here. So that's why we're showing a Dolby monitor out there and our um, device, and they look the same. If you play it out to a Samsung HDR TV, which we have on the booth, it looks the same. So we've replicated Rec. 709 for HDR production by using this PQ brightness standard. So this is very important in a production sense when you're doing color grading or editing, which mm. means you can now have that full HDR look. So you can actually see on a viewing monitor if you buy an HDR monitor, of yes. course, exactly what you were seeing in the field when you were recording it. Yes, exactly. And let's get to that HDR monitor, you know, if you buy the HDR monitor. Right now, there aren't any out there that are affordable. They're $30,000 from Sony and different things. Well, you can watch this space because that's not a big step now that we've done this already. However, what we've given in our latest announcements is PQ in to the device. What does that mean? It means you can set up your Adobe Premiere to output PQ and you can plug this in next to your laptop. See the output. And you can monitor and you can grade it and you can finish it. And you can do that today. Free firmware is available in May. Um, we've, we've, you can see them working out here so that they're in beta form. We go through the final testing. I think we should have it out like around the middle of May. Okay, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Cheers.